Okay, in this scene, we're going to talk about essential fructosuria. That's going to be represented by this teacher over here on this side. And next, we're going to talk about hereditary fructose intolerance, and that's represented by the teacher on this side. But we're talking about essential fructosuria, and that's represented by this teacher, who sang to the class, It's essential that you listen up, everybody. Essential is going to be for essential fructosuria. Okay, so essential fructosuria. So on the, on the board over here, we have a picture of fructose metabolism. And you might have noticed that there's a frog over here sticking through the board. The frog toes are sticking out. That was, remember, fructose. Frog toes for fructose. Well, anyway, for essential fructose, sorry, it's just, it's just important to remember this beginning equation over here. Normally in fructose metabolism, fructose is converted to fructose 1-phosphate. In essential fructosuria, fructokinase is defective, and that's why here it's exploding. So when fructokinase is defective, there's going to be a buildup of fructose, and that's exactly what essential fructosuria is. Fructose ends up in the urine, and that's why this teacher over here has, as I see, these frog toes. If you take a look over here, this frog over here, frog toes by the urine. Top us remember, fructose in the urine. Why does he have a hexagon on his chest over here? This is because hexokinase now becomes the primary pathway for converting fructose to fructose 6-phosphate. This teacher is actually quite kind, much kinder than this teacher over here. This teacher is very intolerant. To help us remember the hereditary fructose intolerance that he's representing, but he's kind, and that's because essential fructoseria is benign, it's kind. Fructokinase deficiency is kinder, since fructose is not trapped in the cells. It only becomes trapped in the cells when it becomes converted to fructose 1-phosphate, but that's not happening here because we don't have fructokinase. And therefore, this is a benign asymptomatic condition. The final note is that it is autosomal recessive, represented by this teacher standing on this Reese's chocolate. Reese's shows up in our autosomal recessive scenes. Okay? Okay, here we're going to be discussing hereditary fructose intolerance, represented by this teacher who says, I do not tolerate talking. I do not tolerate talking for intolerance, because this is going to be on hereditary fructose intolerance. Now, on the board over here, we have a picture of fructose metabolism, right? Represented by this frog toes over here. The frog is sticking his toes through the board. Frog toes or fructose. And this teacher here is pointing to aldolase B. Aldolase B is important for metabolizing fructose 1-phosphate over here. And so in hereditary fructose intolerance, aldolase B is deficient. That's what hereditary fructose intolerance is, a deficiency in aldolase B. And therefore, fructose 1-phosphate will accumulate. And in this disease, fructose 1-phosphate gets trapped in the cells. And that's why it's so much worse than essential fructosuria. And that's why this teacher is <laughs> as opposed to the other teacher, who we appear to be kind. As fructose 1-phosphate accumulates, it causes a decrease in availability of phosphate. Phosphate won't be as available anymore, since aldolase B is not metabolizing fructose 1-phosphate. How are we going to remember that? Here we have the fossils on the floor that the teacher likes to bring to class. And it's exploding. The fossils exploding is to help us remember the deficiency in phosphate. Fossils for phosphate. When phosphate is deficient, that leads to a decrease in gluconeogenesis. The building of sugars. The building of sugars will be defective. That's why we have this structure made of sugar that the teacher likes to bring to class every day that also explodes. The sugar structure exploding is to help us remember that gluconeogenesis will be inhibited, as well as like glycogenolysis, which also produces sugar. Why does the teacher have an apple on his head? Maybe because he was about to eat it? I don't know. But this to help us remember that symptoms in hereditary fructose intolerance follow consumption of fruit, juice, honey, and things like that. Just to mention, the urine dipstick will be negative because this only tests for glucose. You might have noted that the teacher's face is kind of yellow to help us remember the jaundice seen in hereditary fructose intolerance. He has several roses coming out of his liver over here to help us remember the cirrhosis, several roses for cirrhosis. He's vomiting because vomiting is also another finding in it. And he has this hippo, not flying, I'm going to say this hippo is gliding behind him. Hippo gliding for hypoglycemia seen in hereditary fructose intolerance. As you mentioned, sugars are not being made, and that's going to lead to hypoglycemia. Just to mention treatment for hereditary fructose intolerance, it's basically just a person needs to decrease the intake of fructose, sucrose, since sucrose also has fructose in it, as well as sorbitol, since sorbitol is metabolized to fructose. As we noted in the last video, both of these teachers are standing on Reese's chocolate because Reese's chocolate comes up in our autosomal recessive videos. Reese's for recessive, as hereditary fructose intolerance, as well as essential fructosuria, are both inherited in autosomal recessive fashion. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this scene. Leave your comments, ask me questions if you want. If there's a topic you'd like to have a, a video made for, please let me know. Otherwise, take care.